Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, today I've got an awesome video for you guys. I'm actually going to be showing you how I create my thumbnails step by step. It's a really cool process and you can do it without Blender, without any 3D software, just using a simple free photo editor that you guys can download by clicking the link in the description. So if you guys are excited for this video, be sure to drop a like down below and click subscribe if you're new. So let's hop straight into it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to your locker and choose whatever skin you want to be in your thumbnail and make sure you have a back bling on that you like and pickaxes doesn't really matter but definitely the skin and back bling do matter and then emotes it doesn't matter which ones you have in your main tab here you can go and choose those later but the weapon wrap is pretty important so this is totally up to you as you can see my wraps are off right now so it's just the default gun and I Personally, I like how that looks best in the thumbnails, So, but it's personal preference, but make sure you do all this before you hop into creative. All right, so once you are in creative, you can go anywhere. I just chose the block because it's a flat area, but basically you build this huge green box and inside is the green screen studio. So I even put like a spawn pad here where you spawn in and this is your studio right here. So you've got all these lights here that are surrounding you and on the top and of course lighting up the back of the green screen and what this does is obviously it lights your character but it also gives it the illusion that it is a 3d render which is pretty awesome so as you can see when I stand in these lights I'm gonna to want to face this way and basically you can do a bunch of emotes right here just you know you can get some different shots in replay mode you know just do random stuff like this and then you want to go ahead and grab some weapons so I'm just gonna grab a scar for now and let's do a pump shotgun and I don't know let's do a grenade launcher okay so now you go ahead and pull out your weapon you can aim in and just rotate a little bit you know just to get different angles because your camera is going to be placed up front so the back is all lit up and then you might want to do some crouching shots you might even want to shoot I know I have the damage turned on on this so I'll have to fix that and then you can do the same thing with the shotgun you know and then with the grenade launcher too, like pointing at it, crouching. So that's pretty much all you want to do in this creative mode is just do different poses that you're going to be using in your thumbnail. And now we're going to head into replay mode. All right, so this looks like a pretty good shot here of the character, but you want to do a couple things with the camera setting. So you want your exposure to be off of auto. So put it on manual and go ahead and just crank it down until it looks normal, you know, like how I have it right here. And I know he is a little bit orange looking, but don't worry, we will be able to fix that very easily in the editing process. And you're definitely going to want to add some zoom to it because once it's super wide like this, it just looks kind of weird. So definitely zoom in the camera a little bit and then you're going to want to hide all of this stuff. And then just go ahead and position it roughly where you would want it in your thumbnail. So I kind of want a little bit more room on the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and like place them right about there. And then we're just going to go ahead and take a screenshot. So guys, now let's hop into the editing process. So guys, once you've installed the photo editor, you're going to go ahead and click on Advanced Pixlr E. And you guys won't see any of these images here, but these are all the pictures I've edited. So you're going to want to click Create New on the left side and click on the 1280 by 720 and click Create. Now this is your canvas where you're going to be making your thumbnail. You can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And now we're going to go ahead and click on the plus button on the right, click on image, and we're going to find the screenshot that we took of the character. So now it's imported in your canvas. You can see it is a little bit big and you can use these little squares on the edges to adjust how big and small you want this picture. So we're going to make it a little bit bigger right now. That seems about right. Maybe zoom it in a little bit because there is that little weird spot down at the bottom. All right, that's looking pretty good for the placement of that. But now we've got the green in the background, which we don't want. So click on the little scissor icon right here and go up to the top and go to the mask tool and make sure it's selected on the remove and boost up the tolerance right there to about like 50 should be fine. And then just click on the green and you can see you're gonna have to click on it in different spots to remove the majority but it doesn't do the best job. There are a little bit of like green lines and like dust, I call it. So just go up to the little draw tool and make sure it's on remove and then just bring the softness down and then you can go ahead and bring up the size a little bit and then just basically erase all of those 
green lines just so it looks a little bit better. There's a couple more down here. We're going to have to make the brush a little bit smaller to get rid of them after we get rid of the other stuff that we can do with this brush. So now just make it a little bit smaller and go remove the other tiny little spots. And this isn't the best way of doing it, but this is the way I've always done it. And that's a pretty good cutout of the skin right there. And now we're going to go up to adjustment, temperature and tint, and we're going to bring the temperature down because he is a little bit warm. You can already see the difference. If you hold this down, that's before and now that's after. And it looks definitely a lot better with the cooler tint to it because it was too warm. And then go up to adjustment, brightness and contrast, bring up the brightness a little bit and just barely touch the contrast up and that's already looking better. And we can go to hue and saturation, just barely turn up the saturation and then we can go up to vibrance and just increase that a little bit. And that's pretty much it for the tweaking of the skin that's already looking really good. And then go up to add new image. And I'm gonna leave these all linked in the description to download, but we're gonna go ahead and click on the background. And now you have that imported, you're gonna to have to drag it on the left, just down below underneath the skin. So now you can see your skin and it's behind it. So that's already looking pretty solid for a thumbnail but the right side is definitely empty. So we're gonna click on the plus button again and go to image. And we're gonna add this screenshot I took in the game because we're gonna want the close encounters icon to be there because the character is holding a shotgun. I think that doesn't make sense. So we're gonna go ahead and make this a lot larger by grabbing those little squares and then go over to the scissor and then it is already selected on the rectangle one and make sure it's on remove. And all you have to do is drag and just get close to the around where you want to cut out and it automatically does it. It's very quick and also because it's a square, it's super easy to do. So that's pretty good. There's a little bit of an edge I missed there, so just zoom in and fix that up. So that's pretty much it for that cutout. We're gonna make it a little bit bigger again. All right, that's about a good size. And then we're gonna go up to this little circle and just give it a little bit of a rotation to the right. I think that looks pretty good. And then we're gonna drag it beneath the player so that the shotgun barrel is not covered. And now make sure you have those same layers selected. Go to filter, details, and click on sharpen. And just bring it up to like 35 or something is close, you know. And you can see it already like makes the image look a little bit sharper because we did zoom it in quite a bit. So that's already looking pretty good. And go up to adjustment, hue and saturation, and just boost up the saturation just so it pops out a little bit more. So the thumbnail's already looking pretty good. It's just about done, but we definitely wanna add some more text. So now we're gonna click on the plus button and click on text, and then you're gonna type in, we're, I think we're gonna do encounters first. So make sure it's all capitals, and obviously this is not the font we want, so go ahead and click up here. And you guys are gonna to have to download this font in the description, it is Burbank Big Regular. This is the font that Fortnite uses, so go ahead and select that. And then we're gonna make it a little bit bigger, so just go up to the size and increase it to about like 120 or 130, should be fine. And we can change this later. Now we wanna put some color to it, but we don't wanna just you know pour on a normal color. So we're gonna go up to layer, rasterize text element, and that basically turns the text layer into an image layer. So now we cannot alter the text. Go up to select, select pixels, and you can see it highlights the text. And then we're gonna go to the left side down to where the gradient icon is right there. And we're gonna click on that. Go up to the top and click on the white, and then click on the white again. And we're gonna choose like a yellowish color. That's a little bit like two greens. So we're just gonna bring it down more towards the orange a little bit. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And then now we're gonna click on the other white dot here, click on the white and turn it to like an orange color. It's a little bit dark, let's bring it up a little bit. All right, that looks good. Now we're gonna just click, hold, and drag down just so that the dots are above and below the text and then let go and there you go. You have a gradient on your text. And we're gonna go up to select and deselect so now you don't have those lines around it. And then we're gonna go up to filter, outline, and we're gonna change the color to black and make it, I don't know, maybe a little bit bigger probably to like 13 should be fine and apply. So that's already looking really good. It definitely stands out. Now we're gonna add another image and this is going to be the little banner icon you can also download below. I made this quite some time back so it's definitely not 
perfect. You can see like there's a little bit of weird edges on it, but don't worry, no one's really gonna be looking at your thumbnail that close. So we're gonna make it a little bit bigger, that's about right, but the word close is definitely not gonna fit. So we're gonna go up to those three dots and click on duplicate layer, and now we've got two of them. But now we don't want that white line, so just go up to the scissors, and it's already selected on the rectangle and click remove and there you go you've got that line out of there and we have to make this a little bit smaller because it doesn't quite line up and you can use your arrow keys to line it up even better so that looks pretty good right there now we're gonna add another text layer and we're gonna type in close and then we're gonna change the font back to the Burbank big regular and you can see I made the little banner a little bit too big and we're gonna also gonna decrease the size I don't know maybe to like 110 should be fine we're gonna rotate it a little bit and then put it in the position on the left and then we're gonna click on the other layer of the banner and make sure to click on the arrange tool on the left make sure that's selected and then just scoot it over to the left so it lines up a lot better that's already looking sweet and then we're gonna go ahead and merge these two banner icons together by clicking the three dots and click on merge down so that basically what that does is it makes this layer these two layers now one layer so that's pretty useful and for some reason there's a weird glitch if you merge the text down it like disappears so hopefully they'll fix that but for now just leave it alone and then we're gonna move the encounters text down a little bit rotate it just slightly that's a little bit too much all right that's pretty good like that and then now we're gonna bring the, the banner down. It's a little bit too big, so we're gonna make it a little smaller there. And then what you wanna do is go to the right and drag it beneath the encounters layer, so now it's behind. And now drag down the close text right on top, and boom, there you go. That's already looking almost pretty much complete. And encounters is a little bit big, so let's make it a little smaller. That's looking good. All right, so we're just about done. We're gonna click add new image. We're gonna click on this little like starburst effect that I created and it is obviously in front so we want it behind. So we're gonna go to the right and drag it beneath. Pretty much we're gonna bring it beneath everything but the background layer and that gives it a cool effect. I don't know, I think it looks pretty sick. And then we're gonna add another image layer and click on like this anime effect right here. We're gonna go ahead and make it a lot bigger. So just keep zooming it in. I think that's good. No, let's make it a little bit bigger and center it. And then we're gonna click on the three dots, go to blend mode and click on screen. And that basically removes the black. And now you've got those little streaks and we're gonna move it beneath everything except for the background layer. And yeah, pretty much that's it. We're gonna add a couple more things here, just like the little starburst right here i know that's definitely way too big so just bring it down a lot and these you do not have to add you know the last couple of things you really don't but it definitely makes the thumbnail pop out a little bit more we're going to go ahead and duplicate this and drag it and make it a little bit smaller and we can just place these pretty much anywhere we want we're going to put one maybe over there and we're going to just keep duplicating them making them slightly different sizes I don't know, I think up there maybe, and we might do one more, maybe down below on the right would probably be good. Yeah, all right, that looks pretty good, and that is basically it, guys. That is the thumbnail complete. So it's pretty simple, and you can do all of this for completely free, and I think it turns out really awesome. You guys can totally mess around with this, create your own unique thumbnail. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like down below and click subscribe if you're new to the channel. And let me know if you guys want to see more videos like this. I really enjoyed it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.